Hi, my name is Lisa Ashton and I am a trainer of academic horse training. This morning we've got Norman who is a show horse. Uh, he is now actually in his 20s and has had a successful showing career. And today I just want to show you a f about how we can train uh, individual learnt responses from signals or aids. The first thing I want to find out before we start our training is what does Norman do when he has the whip in contact to him? Ideally, your whip should always be used as an extension of your arm. And so what I'm just going to find out is when I apply the whip to his body, does that create a response? If your horse is fearful or adrenalised when, when the whip touches your horse, try and keep his legs still. What we don't want is your horse to practice the, uh, fast legs or distance from touching the whip. And then what you want to try and train is that you can stroke your horse in every part of its body. We call this habituation to contact. What he mustn't do is try to actually move to release the pressure from the schooling whip. So the first thing I'm going to test for Norman is actually just from standing still, what does he know about what we call the decelerating or stop response? And if you look here at his pectoral muscles, he uses the same group of muscles when he does a step back as he does to slow. So it's a really useful exercise to find out what does he know about slowing by asking for one step of step back. So we just put our hand about six inches from the bit back towards his chest. And as you can see there, it has motivated a slight movement of his left front leg. So we do know that there is some connection from the rein and the bit to slowing and his legs, which is great. But actually, I want to see if we'll do a whole step back. And it can be that the first step is half a step. I've just had to increase the pressure, if you saw that on the video, from a light pressure to slightly more to motivate a, a step uh, forwards. It's really important for horses to form habits that you use a time scale whereby you can ask for a light pressure more pressure in the next second or the next step followed by release and the release is everything pressure motivates a horse so to motivate him to step back i use the pressure but the moment he steps back if you watch my hand it goes into what we call a neutral position because that tells him it was the right answer to the question that i've asked which is step back okay so there's a question, what does he know about pressure to step back? And you saw again, I had to increase the pressure in my hand to motivate step back. So what I want to do this time is use a light tap, and we call this a reinforcement. The whip is only as an extension of your arm. Uh, it is not as a punisher. So what we want to do now is, so there's a light pressure. Front leg is the most forwards. There's more pressure, and I'm just going to tap it to motivate. The best time to tap a front leg to step back is just at the start of what we call the swing phase. So just before he takes it off. So if you watch this time, there's my light pressure, more pressure, there's a tap. It wasn't much of a tap for me. In fact, the pressure that you tap should only be as mild as what you can tolerate on your skin. Okay, so now what does Norman know about the actual lead response to motivate forwards or acceleration? So the first thing I'm going to do is bring my hand for like six inches from the bit or 15 centimetres towards the chin. And that light pressure should motivate some response from his legs. As you can see, I'm going to have to increase the pressure. And now to reinforce the go, I give him two taps just exactly where your leg goes. Uh, it's really important that we use the same zones or areas so that the horse can discriminate both from in hand to ridden. We can, we've only got one seat, two legs and two reins, so, and we ask for lots and lots of different movements. So being able to correlate in hand to ridden will really help clear up for your horse um, what you want as a signal and therefore the correct response from your horse. So there's the light lead pressure. He's slightly motivated, you saw that. And the minute he steps forwards, remember to release. At this early stage of, of his training today, we are shaping each response. The fact that your horse, when you very first put your hand towards his chin, is motivated to step forwards, reward it with the immediate release of pressure. However, that was a tiny step. And what we want to try and do is get a rhythm or a, a series of steps so I had to use a slight tap just where the actual rider's leg is. So 
we just tried to go and it actually wasn't as immediate or as light as what we'd like it to be. And, and we call this obedience. Those two components, lightness and immediate, make up obedience. And so we can actually use the increase in pressure to motivate a, a quicker response and lightness. And so I'm going to just use a, a series of three repetitions to motivate him to go from, a, from the light signal towards his chin. So the first thing I'm going to ask for is there's the light pressure. Nothing's happening, so the next second is in more pressure. And two taps motivate him to step forwards. But it's really important that as soon as he goes, you release. So I'm going to do my second repetition of this exercise now. There's the light pressure. If you notice, that time motivated him to go, but now he's stalling. So we give him one tap. It's really important that you discriminate between faster, which is two taps, to longer steps or keep going, which is one tap. And the reason why it's important to do this in hand is we can shape and correlate this to ridden work or under saddle. So they actually become the same meaning when you actually then get on a ride. You'd squeeze for faster with, from your calf if you wanted to go up with a transition and you nudge from your heel for longer if you wanted longer steps. So there's a the light signal, he's delayed. There's two tap taps. It's really important that there isn't too long a gap between the tap, otherwise they might think that the release is a reward. And there's my light pressure for stop, and it motivated him in what we call a time frame. We need consistent time frames of light, more pressure release to form habits. And we know this through how horses learn, or the, the science behind it. So there's my light pressure. He see it's motivated one step, but then he doesn't continue. We call this rhythm level because what he needs to do is take multiple strides. So I, that's why I just quickly use that whip tap to motivate. And you can then take the whip away. And that was a really lovely light response back towards his chest to motivate stop. And that's when it becomes humane and ethical by using the lightest pressure. So there's my signal for go. Because I've had to use a whip tap previously, he is now motivated to go from the light signal. And that's the learning theory component of academic horse training. I'm now going to see what he remembers of what we call the park, which is basically about immobility. And because tension and uh, fear is all linked to acceleration or running of the legs, park is one of the best techniques you can use to help motivate relaxation. It's also great for mounting when you actually want to mount and your horse might be moving side to side from the mounting block and it's also great for things like going through gates when you're out hacking. So I need to be able to walk forwards and for him not to use my legs as a signal to walk on. Good boy. I worked with Norman about six years ago so what we're finding out today is what does he remember of these learnt signals. If he was to step forwards now, we would just want to put him back exactly where he came from. And that's why it's quite important that he understands what the whip means for motivating a step back. So that if I'm out here, which is about a metre away from Norman, I can actually do this back and motivate this leg to go back. So I'm just going to get a little bit closer back. Good boy. Good boy. The best place actually to scratch a horse or to give them a reward is just at the wither. And what this does is has a parasympathetic connection to the vagus nerve in the heart, which directly lowers the horse's heart rate. So once again, it's another really useful bit of knowledge in your toolbox that you can have brimming with uh, good information to actually motivate relaxation uh, during your training or learning session for your horse.